My name is Sonny Gannigan. Um, I'm a lawyer and a writer here. I practice family and criminal law. Um, last year I had the opportunity to be um, hired through the Office of Hawaiian Affairs to be um, a writer for what is now called the New Hawaiian Justice Task Force Report. So in that capacity I worked with um, the people that were put on that task force by law as well as the, um, the research division of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs and I got to help create this document. I'm here on my own time to discuss its findings. Yeah, I was worried about any ethical violations, trust me. Sure. Uh, the question I have is I've heard the term racism tossed about quite freely and readily this afternoon. And my question to you is, I see the police officers on the street. They're a spectrum of our community. The, the vast majority of them are non-white. I see our judicial system, the same thing. I see our committee chairman in this committee and the Senate committee, same thing. I see the, the administration, same thing, the spectrum of Hawaii. Where are these racists and who are they? Or is it a condition of poverty? Well, I mean, who are they? We, we, well, we banded this about, but I think we're giving the police a bad name. I think we're giving our judges a bad name. I think we're giving Ted a bad name. We just say it's racism, racism, racism. In Hawaii, that doesn't fit. So who are they? Who are these racists? Well, Representative McDermott, if you read the report, part of what we discuss is how um, the perpetuation of inequality is not pointed at any one individual or at anybody in office. It is part of a legacy of racism that has been inherited by the people who now represent Hawaii. So part of the things that we discuss are things like unconscious bias, the ways that um, folks in the justice system continue to practice um, essentially racial inequality by um, acting on um, things that they grew up in. So, um, it, and a lot of that is unconscious. So there's a lot of research going on here um, the way West Richardson School of Law by the faculty, as well as on the mainland, how um, how the justice system continues to um, put the types of people in prison that you would expect to see in prison, the types of people in power that you would expect to see in power. That is one answer to your question. Another answer to your question is we're not even sure how some of this stuff happens, but we just know that it's statistically racist. And that statistic has been carried over for generations. It goes back um, not only from the 2010 report that created the Justice Task Force report that I got to work on, but back to 1994 and the Casabon reports, back to 1981, the first Casabon report, back to 1964 when they started doing stuff, back to the kingdom. Um, and there are researchers that are discussing all of this. Um, I'm not here to say that you or anyone else is racist or any of the fine members of the Department of Public Safety or the police departments are acting in overt racism. But when you look at the statistics, there's an overwhelming overrepresentation of the Native Hawaiian community, certain populations of color that we know and recognize. So let me ask you this, what is the most overrepresented um, group? Is it Native Hawaiians or the Samoans, percentage-wise, based on their population? Well, you have people in this room that could probably answer that more succinctly than myself. As of 2012, when I did this report, it was Native Hawaiians based on their population. That's right, and I, I point you to the report itself because it was done with the utmost care from the research divisions of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs as well as the faculty of the law school and the faculty of the University of Hawaii. So that stuff is essentially unassailable in terms of research. So the Samoans would be a close set. Man, I don't, know, I don't know about the Samoans, but we were looking at Native Hawaiians and the indigenous population and they, the way they are overrepresented in the criminal justice system as compared to the regular population. And that is inequality. So if... Could it, could it be that they're committing more crimes? Is that possible? You know, if that's part of it, there's also... Is it, is it, is it possible? You know, we're going into a discussion that also talks about um, the over-policing of some of these communities. So there are more cops in Waianae than there are in um, more diverse communities, more affluent communities, um, the communities that have a little bit more money. There's, um, this stuff is known. It's also being researched here and on the mainland. Um, 
some of the answers to <coughs> what Representative Ng was asking about might not even come from America. So the report discusses the work of other nations, New Zealand, <coughs> England, other places that don't, um, that are similarly diverse to Hawaii, but don't um, have the same level of jailing and don't spend the same amount of money as we do on jail. They have excellent service providers, um, not to say that their communities are completely crime free or that their indigenous populations are not overrepresented in the criminal justice system, but just to say that they are doing it better. So broaden your scope a little bit is what some of the report is saying. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.